tonight to our Health and Wellness Legislative Forum. My name is Cece Robinson and I um, am here representing Ohio County Healthcare. And um, Ohio County Healthcare is very proud to be part of our local Ohio County Health Coalition. Um, our Ohio County Health Coalition is a group that's been active for about a decade now. We meet on a monthly basis. We welcome everyone in this room to come join us. We meet on the third Thursday of each month at the Extension Office uh, from 11.30 to 1. And we come together on a monthly basis. Uh, it's a, a collection of people who have an interest in health. It's local businesses, it's civic groups, volunteer organizations, and healthcare organizations to just keep that conversation going. How can we improve and sustain health for our community? And that's from our youth to our seniors, anyone who's affected. Um, the Health Coalition each year does a strategic plan. Many of you all in this room have come out and, and taken that opportunity to work with us on our strategic plan and give us your input on um, what you consider health priorities or objectives for the community. Um, we are currently focusing on three main categories that would be improving um, community lifestyle, increasing physical activity and decreasing our rate of obesity, and substance abuse. Under substance abuse, that can go from um, prescription drug abuse, opiate abuse, um, illegal drug abuse, um, tobacco cessation, tobacco products, and as we now we have several members of our school board here, our family resource coordinators, vaping and jeweling. It's a big, big, big thing that's going on in our community. So we wanted to have a forum here tonight so that we could have an opportunity to hear from our candidates what their views on health and wellness for our community is, as well as to let our community have a chance to ask questions of their candidates for um, anything that may be specific to your health needs. Um, at any time that you have a question about health, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Represented here tonight, we have in the back the Green River District Health Department. If I give a big wave. Um, at their table, we have several petitions you can sign on health initiatives for the community. We also have some pledge cards. If you're not comfortable speaking, it's a great way to, to voice your um, opinion, and we will make sure that your candidate and your magistrates get that information. Um, also, we have Ms. Jamie Evans back there serving food. Anytime during the night, we're very informal. Get up, get some more food. If you all do not eat that food, it has to go home with me. And I do not want to eat sub sandwiches all week. Um, so help yourself to as much food as you want. Our Ohio County Extension, um, services. We've got April Peach and Tiffany Calvert are, um, with our extension, our homemaker, family and consumer science agents, and they were kind enough to make for us tonight the energy bites, and our power bites, I believe we call them, and we're all kind of addicted to the power bites and the health coalition, so we beg and beg and beg for them to make those. Um, and we have Miss Rebecca Horn, who is at the registration table, and Rebecca does a great job helping to um, bring lots of different substance abuse um, initiatives to combat the use of, of substance abuse or combat the spread of substance abuse and um, we're always glad to have her here. I'm gonna turn this uh, the mic over, there he is over there, to my coworker, Judson Hunter. Judson is going to be our moderator for the evening. Judson, if you'll remember, I think, did you do? Did uh, the primaries. Yes, he did, a, we did a community forum at the community center, I think it was the Beaverdam Women's Club that hosted that. And the Chamber of Commerce. And the Chamber of Commerce, thank you. And Judson did such an excellent job moderating that that we just had to call on him to help us tonight. And Judson is our HR um, manager at Ohio County Healthcare with me. And he is going to give you an overview of the evening, how it will work. And our goal tonight is to create a great community conversation. We want to know what you're thinking and what you're wanting of your candidates. And we hope that, um, we of course want to keep it civil, we want to keep it kind, but we do want to engage in conversation because that is how change happens. So with that, Mr. Hunter, you have the floor. All right. Uh, tonight, our candidates will respond to each question with two minute response time. Uh, the timekeeper will indicate when there's one minute left 10 seconds left and when time has expired. 
Throughout tonight's forum, please refrain from applause until all candidates have given their closing statements. Tonight, we will begin with our judge executive uh, candidates. We'll go ahead and ask them if they can come up and we'll introduce them in just a minute. And down just a little bit, get them some feedback. You might have to tell them how the mics are going to work. Um, both mics are hot, so you just need to turn them on. And uh, they should be working fine for you. You know, Judson, I forgot to mention that um, OC Monitor will be taping this. Are we streaming live it live, stream. guys? So we're going to be streaming it live tonight. <laughs> so if they can't be here to join the conversation, they might Facebook us some questions. Pick it up and Okay, to start off, we'll first start with incumbent David Johnston and then have a response from the challenger Brandon Thomas. Uh, each will have a standard two minute introduction focusing on their role of improving health in the community. So Judge Johnston, we'll begin with you. Thank you, Justin. And, and thank you, uh, Ohio County Healthcare and Ohio County uh, Health Department for, uh, for sponsoring this. We really appreciate this opportunity. Uh, uh, obviously, there's nothing more important to uh, community and quality of life than our health. Uh, I, I want to dedicate as much uh, resources as we can, as much effort as we can to improve the uh, uh, health of the county. And of course, that means working with the health department and with the uh, uh, Ohio County Health Care. I'm sorry for the stutter, but I still want to say hospital, but we'll get there. Thank you. Hello, I'm, can you hear me? Yeah. Hello, I'm Brandon Thomas, uh, candidate for judge executive. And um, <clears throat> the health care, uh, health spectrum in general is, uh, is so very broad. Um, I would like to see more emphasis put on taking care of, of issues that we have here as such a, a, a dialysis center maybe being added to the county. Um, there's, a, there's a, a multitude of health issues, not only physical health, but, but mental health that we need to be very focused on. Uh, I'm glad to be here tonight. I'm interested to see what uh, questions you guys might have for us. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Thomas, we'll start with you for the first question. The format for tonight will be, we have a set of three questions we'll ask each candidate, and then we'll open the floor up for general questions. Uh, for the public to ask the two of you. Mr. Thomas, the first question, and then David Johnston will follow your response. What do you see as the role of the county government in promoting and sustaining health and wellness in the community? Probably, um, you know, our parks and recreation is a free event or free facility for people to use the walking trails, use the outdoors. Uh, also, I know there's been some money spent here recently in the uh, uh, entryways to the Rough River for kayaking. Um, I think it's very important that the county uh, provide those things and, and nice facilities of, for, for recreation and um, enjoyment, but also for the health benefits. And let me think, what was the second part of the question? What do you see as the role of county government in promoting and sustaining health and wellness in the community? Well, yeah, basically I think that's what I've covered just to make sure that there's anything that we can do to, to uh, let public, let people have public access uh, for not only enjoyment, but for, for health benefits as well. Uh, I think the role of uh, County government is significant in health care and uh, wellness in the in the uh, county. Uh, we need to look at ways that we can for sure help with uh, substance abuse because we know that is a health issue. As Brandon touched on mental health, uh, we have very little to offer anyone that has a, a mental health issue here. Um, especially for the low income and if you know that if a person's a, a substance abuser they usually fall into that uh, category.
category. Don't know yet what's the right thing to do on that, but plan to look into it and see. We know that what we are doing uh, and have tried very hard at does not work. Uh, now to the wellness end of it. End of it. Yes, I think uh, our parks plays a big role in that. We have lots of activities here to do and, uh, and, and a lot of facilities for people to use. And as you know, Fiscal Court also contributed to the uh, Wellness Center to buy some new equipment a few years ago, and uh, that's not off the table to do again. And we also helped with the renegotiation and the redo of the bond for the Wellness Center that's made it sustainable for a really long time. Thank you. Judge Johnson, the next question starts with you. What do you feel is the biggest health challenge facing the citizens of Ohio County? Well, our report card shows that we have a really high rate of lung cancer and that we have a really high rate of uh, uh, hep C. And uh, there's going to be have to do more research to see the real causes of it because the lung cancer rate is higher percentage-wise than our excess, excessive uh, rate of smoking that our county does over others. The, the, uh, uh, that doesn't explain all of our problems with uh, lung cancer. We know that it's higher than, uh, higher than that. And the hep C is higher than the, the risk factors from uh, drug use and that sort of thing. So a lot of research to do yet. And I know that the health department and the uh, uh, Ohio County Healthcare is gonna help us with that. And we're gonna try to come up with something, a reason so we can start working to try to uh, prevent that. Uh, or at least reduce that, uh, those odds. It's not a good distinction to have. Of course, we have many other kinds of cancer too, and many other things that we need to fight, but uh, uh, I think the fiscal court does have a role in that, and we need to continue to help with it. Could you repeat that question, please? Yes, sir. What do you feel is the biggest health challenge facing the citizens of Ohio County? Uh, the biggest health challenge is the ability for for the general public to obtain insurance so that they can go to uh, to doctors and medical facilities and, and so they can afford their uh, medications when they are prescribed. Um, I think that, that I don't know that that's a problem that Ohio County Fiscal Court can, can particularly address. I know through the help of our legislators and on up the line, uh, but there are so many people out here that, that just cannot, simply cannot afford their medicines. They've been to the doctor at some point in time, but uh, they're on fixed income and cannot, cannot uh, afford their medicines. So I think that's, that's a major issue we have in Ohio County. Thank you. Mr. Thomas, we'll start with you for the next question. According to Foundation for a Healthy Kentucky, the national average of adult smokers is 15.1%, yet Ohio County's rate is 33%. Do you feel that a countywide smoke-free ordinance would benefit Ohio County? What would it, would it drive economic development for the community? You know, there's a lot uh, to be said in that question. I, d I don't know why our rate is so much higher. Um, sometimes these cycles, uh, as with so many things, with poverty and, and drug abuse, so many of those things are, uh, are brought on from just, a, just the environment that they've grown up in, their families, and, and what's considered uh, acceptable. Uh, that's gonna be a, a, a tough habit to break for those that are, that are willing to break the habit. It's also a tough cycle to break to, um, to keep from the younger generation picking up on. Um, what was the question is, according to the Foundation for a Healthy Kentucky, the national average of adult smokers is 15.1%, yet Ohio County's rate is 33%. Do you feel that a countywide smoke-free ordinance would benefit Ohio County? Would it drive economic development for the community? I can only think, um, and, and maybe I may be wrong, but I can only think of one particular uh, 
business or facility in Ohio County that uh, has not already gone smoke free. Uh, I think the uh, the citizenry and and has has pretty much taken care of that. Uh, they know that their customers had rather go into a smoke free facility. So I think most of the business owners have chosen to uh, make their restaurants and facilities smoke free. Uh, yes, he's correct in that most of our businesses now are uh, are smoke free, uh, and it was it seemed in a way that it would be a moot issue to uh, to pass a uh, smoking ordinance. However, I would support it because I would like for Ohio County to be on the leading edge and progressive edge on the war on smoking, and that would be part of. Uh, that would be our contribution to it. And absolutely, uh, there's, uh, there's evidence to, to say that uh, businesses coming into the county uh, would look at that and would look at Ohio County favorably if we had done that. Because it shows that we are trying to address the problem. Uh, whether we can do a lot about it or not, it shows that we're trying. And, and that's what uh, new businesses coming into our county uh, would want to see. Okay, thank you. Up next, for the part of the judge's executive um, forum, we're gonna open the floor up to the public for 10 minutes, and we'll allow questions. Tickets were placed in a bowl, and uh, we'll call out ticket numbers for you to ask your question. We'll start with Judge Johnston on this one, and then Rotate back and forth as questions come through. So I think Cece's going to call out a number, and then Judge Johnson, you'll respond to the question first. I don't want to confuse the number with the pocket, my tickets in my pocket. Six, four, five, seven, eight, seven, one. Make sure that's not me. Oh, Mr. Terry Miller. Do you need the mic? David, have the uh, magistrates ever, has the fiscal court ever voted on an ordinance or did you just talk about it? Uh, Terry, we have actually never voted on one. Um, we, we probably will soon. Um, it's been talked about, there's been committees reported and all that. And uh, never did I think I had support on the court to pass it. So we never did actually make the motions in seconds because in uh, in reality and what I believe is we would probably get two votes for it and I don't think that's changed over the years but uh, I think really really soon I believe that motion will be put on the floor for that I, ordinance. I think we ought to have everybody on record for or against it and I don't intend to vote for anybody who thinks it ought to be legal to smoke in public places. Thank you Terry. Well, I mean, the, the answer about has it ever been brought to a vote, I think that has been answered. Was there another part to the question? Just you ask if no, it had ever I mean, been brought to a know, vote. The, the sooner you can get it voted on, the sooner you get everybody on the fiscal court on record publicly. Okay. But, I mean, that you didn't have a, that was the, that was the question. I don't right? have okay. any more questions. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Thomas, we'll let you respond to the next question first. So we have six, four, five, seven, eight, seven, nine. Seven. We have this nice lady. Are you welcome to give your name and include your magistrate or your? Uh, I'm fairly new to Ohio County. My name is Shayla Wilson. I'm a retired nurse practitioner. I moved here about five years ago. I'm also a cancer survivor. And I think it's, it is, there is no excuse not to have the smoke-free ordinance for this county. When you have 33% of the people that, have, uh, that are smokers, that means that of those 33%, you probably have at least 50 to 60% that are exposed to secondhand smoke, which is just as detrimental. And for the, for the county to say, well, we've not brought it up because we didn't think we would get it passed, I don't think it's a good excuse. I agree with the gentleman. We need to have everybody on record as where you stand on this. 
Okay, and, and was, what was the question? Was there? Yes, they, they're welcome to make comment or question. Okay, and if okay. you want to respond to question. My question had been about the smoke free ordinance. Okay. You had answered my question as to whether it had been addressed. Yeah. And for me, the fact that it has not been seems to say that you have not fulfilled your responsibilities as leaders of the community. Well, I am uh, running for judge executive. I'm a candidate, David is the incumbent. So hey, if you had any other questions, I just want to make sure that, that I explained or answered your question. Uh, I will tell you though, there is a, an active committee. There's an active committee that's never stopped. They meet regularly, that, uh, that's a broad range of people. And, uh, and it's not like we're not working on it just because we didn't bring it to a vote. I don't think that anyone on the committee of the Health Coalition all knows who the ones that support it and who the ones that don't. So we at this point had never brought it to vote, but the committee constantly works on it and tries to figure out something that they can put into it to get it to where it would pass. But the citizens need to know who won't support Okay, six, four, five, seven, eight, seven, seven. I keep looking to think mine's going to get drawn. Oh, there we go. And you're welcome to stand up. Do you need a mic? No. Okay. Um, Mr. Thomas mentioned earlier that he would like to see dialysis doctors, different doctors brought to this community. As a retired ultrasound and x-ray technician, I understand that hospitals is primarily their responsibility to do the recruiting and try to get doctors and specialists in. What do you feel is the role of the um, Ohio County Fiscal Court, if any, in order to bring doctors, since that seems to be more of a health care issue with the facilities themselves? Well, it certainly is to help them with funding, um, if, if that be possible, to uh, for expanded services, we, we do uh, uh, sign bonds for for them to be able to borrow money and for them to be able to expand their services and I would definitely uh, be in favor of that. I think that uh, Dialysis Center is very much necessary for Ohio County. We have many, many patients that go to Gillenburg County, uh, to Davis County. I think that would just be a, a service that we should offer citizens in Ohio County. Yes, we like that. I like that question. I'm not differing too much from uh, Brandon on that, uh, but it is something that I do think ultimately fiscal court has some role in every single thing that happens in the county, one way or the other. There's a close association with the health care uh, and the, and the uh, fiscal court because fiscal court actually owns the hospital and we appoint the board to the hospital. Uh, and the things he mentioned, one of the things he mentioned is something that uh, CC never sees me that I don't mention, nor does Blaine. I mention the Dallas Center to him every time I see them. And also, I really want to see our, our uh, delivery room and, and that service back in the county. We did have that for many years. We don't now. Um, I, I think that it would be more feasible later on because right now, uh, it's a matter that the, the delivery service is mostly for uh, uh, Medicaid recipients, which doesn't pay the hospital a lot. But as our county grows and, and a smaller percentage of the folks are, are Medicaid, I think maybe it'll be a more feasible thing to look at. And those are the two things I really want to see done. And fiscal court and uh, myself would constantly work on trying to uh, get those services here. Center. Um, the current detention center that we have, of 
course, we all know that it has a lot of problems because it's old. And of course, um, when it rains, the sewage comes up through the basement, uh, leaks, and comes into the basement cells where it makes our house, of course, um, with the sewage coming up in the basement floor, uh, where inmates a lot of times, because the uh, jail is overpopulated, where the inmates are staying and sleeping in the floor with the possible spread of disease through hepatitis and stuff of that nature and other diseases that spread throughout that jail. My question is, what are you willing to do as incumbent if reelected, or what are you willing to do if you're elected, Mr. Thomas, to help do something different to uh, work on the current jail that we have until we can get another one to help stop the <coughs> spread of communicable diseases and to help address the problems with the sewage coming up to the floor into making the current facility inhumane to live in for the inmates. Okay, well, thank you. Um, our jail is a, an issue, but we are dealing with it. He's talking about that one time there has been a problem with backup of sewage. And just this week, we've contracted with someone to fix that completely. Um, we've been putting Band-Aids on it for a while and think it was fixed, but we're completely redoing the sewer line to the jail now, uh, <laughs> cutting it out. So that one little thing's fixed. And uh, any issues that comes up, we fix them as they, as they happen uh, because we want the jail safe. It's called a life safety jail, so we want it safe and healthy for as it can be for the inmates. And, Yes, constantly, fiscal court has for the last several years, uh, even on the court that Brandon was on too, we've looked at the possibility and the feasibility of building a new jail. And uh, we are, we're constantly looking at that. I think we're gonna do a new feasibility study soon because the company that did us before, we just can't believe what they came up with. Uh, they came up with a figure of $17 million to build one and we know of other communities that's built them less. So we're gonna work with, uh, with the uh, Senate and the House representatives to get them to pass some legislation that will uh, ease up on what you have to have for a new jail that, so it wouldn't be so expensive to build. Well, I first and foremost would like to take a tour of the jail. That's not something that's really available for anyone to every day to, to go and take a tour of. Um, so to say what the problems may be or what I could maybe improve on would just be giving you a false sense, false words. I, I would at first have to address the, the issues by looking at them and inspecting and asking questions myself. Uh, I, I certainly hope that they have uh, taken care of the problem with the sewage backing up, but. Like I said, I mean, uh, from the outside, most people do not know what, what is or what isn't there. So but thank you for your question. Six, four, five, seven, eight, seven, three. Wouldn't it be great if I was reading this off of like that billion dollar lotto? <laughs> so eight, seven, three. Oh, here we go, right here. Do you need a mic now? No. I have a question um, for David and for Brandon. Um, I've been asking several people. Um, I'm in the GB Golf and I'm born and raised in this county. I'm in school with David. Um, and I'm deeply concerned about um, the drugs that are taken over our county. And I do not understand why the Penny Ball Drug Task Force is not allowed in this county anymore. And I would like to know if this issue has gone before the fiscal court and if it has been voted for it, who voted against it. And I don't understand why Mr. Baby thinks the cost is too much because I'm talking about our children and I'm talking about our grandchildren. And I'd appreciate if both of you could answer that question for me. Uh, thank you, Judy. Um, first of all, we do have a severe drug problem in, in the county. And yes, there is something called Penny Ryle Drug Force, Drug, drug Task Force. Uh, our sheriff has opted not to use it. And it was his choice at the beginning of this term when he took office that he didn't want to deal, he didn't want to do that. He'd rather hire his own detective. But as far as, it's not too costly though. I believe it was like $6,000 a year with paying that. Brandon may remember that too. 
we paid about six thousand dollars a year for the penny Ryle drug task force but since this subject's up here i've got to tell you something uh arresting people putting them in jail arresting people putting them in jail longer send them back to jail and send them longer it's not working i do not know what the answer is but i know that's not the answer we've got to think of something new and uh, we've got to put our heads together and figure out something that works better than uh, incarceration. Um, I don't really know for certain how to answer the question why the Penny Royal Narcotics Task Force is not allowed in Ohio County. I don't know if that's a decision that has to be made by the fiscal court or if it is solely dependent on the Sheriff's Department. So I, I can't really tell you for certain who makes the decision whether or not they are in our county. I do know that I recently have, have seen some large, large drug uh, seizures that have taken place through the Penny Rob Narcotics Task Force. Um, hopefully that, uh, I do know they're in, in Muhlenberg County and some surrounding counties. Um, hopefully that may have stopped some of the flow of drugs coming into our county. Um, drug problems always tend to be uh, more prevalent in low-income uh, areas and low-income communities. Uh, but to say that that uh, that is the only reason, it, it's not the only reason, but but uh, like I said, that, that cycle is, is something that has to be taught at the very young age, and, and I do think that they are, I know my daughter, for one, works through the Sheriff's Department, through uh, AmeriCorps, and, she does a class at some grade schools to try to get that instilled in them at a younger age and to try to find out what it is they know about drugs. And, and from, from finding out what they know about drugs, it, it uh, tends to lead you maybe to, to where there may be issues in certain parts of the county. Um, she goes to all the schools, so I do think that's a good program that, that uh, the Sheriff Department has it implemented or or at least allow people to go into the schools and the school districts has allowed that to happen to, to uh, know from one district of the school to a different district where that drug problem may be more severe, maybe more of a concern that the Sheriff's Department could focus maybe on more on that area. So, but to answer your question, why the Penny Rowell Narcotics Task Force is not allowed here, I really can't answer that question to you. Okay, six, four, five, seven, eight, six, five. Oh, yay, it's me. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Cece Robinson, Ohio County Healthcare. Um, actually, and I'm going to go ahead and close this out with this question, and we're going to be asking this of all of our candidates. So, as host of the evening for Ohio County um, Health Coalition, and, and really it frames back into your question. We think a major health improvement for our community is a smoke-free ordinance. Then we have several physicians that are in our audience. We can tell you scientific-based evidence that shows there are so many cancers and co-related diseases attached to smoking. We want to support the smoker and the non-smoker. We do not, we're, we don't want to take away someone's right. If you choose to smoke, that's your choice. And we accept that. But we do want to make sure that we're also protecting the health of the people who don't smoke. And so with that, as a health coalition, we want to know from each candidate, what is your position if you should come into office on a smoke-free ordinance? Judge, I believe you went first and you had said you support a smoke-free ordinance. Yes. So, Mr. Thomas. Well, of course, I, I have been on the court when there has been ordinances brought before us that had many, many issues. Um, yes. And I think that at that time we'd ask for some of those to be addressed mm -hmm. before we would vote on them. And one of the issues I do remember was that it said that you could not smoke within 20 feet of an entrance of a building. Yes, sir. I had some people in Hartford and in Beaver Dam actually that said there's nowhere exactly. within 20 feet of our building. Um, so. To say that I'm totally against it, I will not say, but to say that I could be totally for it, I would have to see the ordinance yes. and review it. 
so, we'd love to get your copy of that and i haven't seen the latest ordinance i mean i know maybe some of these things have changed they have. that committee that the judge was referencing um one of the requests that was brought to us by our magistrates uh, who are sitting in, in the court now was if you're standing in the middle of the street you can't be 20 feet yeah, yeah but what a... we ask is a reasonable distance so we changed that language in the ordinance to say smoking within a reasonable distance okay. so that people could enter those businesses enter those doorways when they have breathing conditions when yeah. they have small children when they have themselves to protect from their health without smoke yes so. and also um I would like to see what is considered. Are you talking about government-owned properties? Or are you talking about what? What? I'd have to see I'm all the stipulations. To, Becky Horn's more of an expert on that. So what I would like to do is, because I know we have to get onto our magistrates. Judson's giving me the okay. the cut it off look. So we will bring you a copy of the ordinance and then come back to you at a later date. Okay. Thank you. Thank Just you, sir. For the audience, uh, it's uh, public places and workplaces. So any place somebody works or any place that invites a public. So it would not be homes, uh, would not be, you know, anywhere outdoors. It's public places and all workplaces. Any, anybody that, and not your home. So if you're like a surveyor at your house or you have an architectural business at your home, homes are not covered unless they're child care or, or health care facilities. And these are some of the things that the committee's worked on since it was last printed, presented to fiscal court. I think it'll be presented again really soon. I know uh, Ben Chandler came down and talked to the fiscal court a few months ago, and uh, it seemed like that uh, at that moment we had some new uh, interest in it. Um, but at that later at that, when it was reviewed, we still didn't have the uh, votes to pass it. But uh, I want the committee to come back again to fiscal court real soon. Uh, but those, some of those things that's addressed, like the reasonable distance from a door instead of 20 feet from the door, have been addressed and then those exemptions for home offices and certain businesses um, i'd like to thank both of you all and i'd like to thank our audience for our judge questions our judge executive question you all had a great conversation there and i appreciate that that's what we want to see tonight is a sharing of viewpoints so that we can all get to know each other thank you for your time thank you You're let's welcome. allow each candidate to have a two minute closing statement oh please. so sorry Mr. Thomas, so sorry, sorry. Mr. Hunter. Well, I just uh, really appreciate everyone being here tonight to, to give us each the opportunity and to, and to give us the opportunity to learn you. And, um, you know, there's, there's so many, so many things that are involved in county government um, from a financial aspect to the health care aspect. Um, I just like to say that, that uh, more community involvement will, will, is what we have to have to grow this community, uh, to grow our county to see it set aside, set apart from other counties that uh, we may be trying to compete with for industry. We have to have more community involvement. We have to have more community to show up to the polls. Um, if, the, the, if, one, if one time that we could have a 60% voter turnout would, would gain so much notoriety, not only across our county, across our state. And um, that, that was that's really what we have to have to, uh, to to come together and and be a part of it. I would like to see standing room only at the physical court meetings, not only for for uh, the audience to listen to what we have to say, but for for us to have to listen to what the audience has to say, just as we have tonight. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm I'm uh, going to drift off the subject just a little bit. Uh, I, I want a healthy Ohio County. Uh, for everybody, and we need to find all the reasons that uh, uh, that cause it. I was married 45 years and two months to a lady that never smoked in her life, never drank, watched her diet uh, faithfully, and, and fussed at me because I didn't. Uh, she exercised every day and did everything she knew to have a healthy lifestyle, but she died of cancer. So uh, health for this county is very important to me. Hey, I'd like to thank you all for tonight, uh, and I know the audience appreciates your all's responses as well. If you could help me thank the candidates.
I'd like to invite our magistrates up to the table. We're going to have um, everyone come up at once. I'll ask that um, districts, uh, incumbents, and opponents sit together. And then I believe we have um, one representative. Uh, we'll have one table with two separate districts at that one table. Everybody. Okay, so we have uh, Jason Bullock and Dwight Renner from District 2, and then we have uh, incumbent Joe Barnes and Marty Tishner from District 3. So we'll start off with District um, 2, and we're going to go the same question for all four, but we'll start with District 2, and Jason, we'll start with you if you don't care. We'll have to pass the mics back and forth. You're going to have to ask me a question I can't remember. You don't remember? No. <laughs> there were no questions okay. I ahead of time. So. Um, how can local government help to support infrastructure needed to increase the physical activities in Ohio County? Well, I think we have. I mean, we can continue to look every way we can. You know, like David said, we were contributors to the Wellness Center. To help them keep a lot, keep going with the uh, co-service money we gave them to buy all new equipment. We've also worked along with the uh, Wellness Center board to uh, mainly the board and uh, Tara Ward is a lawyer. I think they were forgiven three million dollars of their uh, note, so they're doing well. As a magistrate, I work with the city of Beaverdown too. We've uh, we've contributed to playground equipment. We've contributed to. Uh, uh, the basketball court uh, and uh, multiple funds for Beaverdam uh, uh, Park, let alone we've added to the park system in Ohio County. Uh, we work along with the Ohio County Hospitals. I think they're getting ready to expand the surgical center. So we're always continuing looking at different ways, whether it be surgical centers, whether it be parks, whether it be the wellness center, anything we can to make our uh, Ohio County people healthy. Um, and like I said, I think it's a big part of economic development to have a healthy uh, workforce in Ohio County. So it's, uh, it, it's a big concern of ours, and we want to always continue looking into it. Well, thanks for having me here. And I think that's true what Jason was talking about, but just like the, when I'm on the school board, we went along with, uh, with the Wellness Center to help with the help re refinancing and stuff for the uh, wellness center and just like with all the parks and the uh, stuff at the fairgrounds and all that I think that's one good thing about doing this is helping with the wellness and, and just like with all the kids and stuff like that what you have in the school it's best to try to try to get them started earlier on physical education and uh, eating right and all that so that's why I think that the fiscal court needs to help with the school systems and with all the county uh, parks and with the, each individual city uh, recreation. Thank you. I'll repeat the question for you. How can local government help to support infrastructure needed to increase physical activity in Ohio County? I think the fiscal yeah, turn it on there, sir. Uh, I think the fiscal court should uh, do everything they could to promote health and wellness in the community uh, through more programs uh, through the health department and uh, the wellness center. Uh, I believe the uh, walking trails are a great thing. I, I see a lot of people using them, but if we if we start educating people early, as the, uh, before they get older, when they're in school, if we have programs that, that include physical education and, and, and the importance of it to, uh, to ward off certain diseases and just to to show that a healthier community is better economically for Ohio County also. Thank you. Joe Barnes, third district magistrate, uh, sit on the court right now. We have done things to try to uh, aid to our health as far as countywide. Uh, us personally as magistrates, we've also given discretionary money, which is kind of how we help our own communities and 
and I've given several to our local parks in my district and then even helped out the trail town for the uh, kayak uh, put in and entries and I think that's a good thing. It took a little while to get it going due to the fact that uh, right-of-ways and, and stuff for the uh, Rough River, I've, I've tried to uh, uh, promote going ahead and getting it started on the Green River. Um, we have worked for the wellness, uh, worked on things for the wellness center as far as uh, using our bonding power to help uh, rebond and uh, relieve a lot of financial debt that they had on their facility that was in a prior deal that we did not have any involvement in. And uh, we were working with the hospital on uh, remortgaging the land because we do own the land so they can expand. So that's things I think as a court we can do. Um, I think we need to stay in that avenue. Now we did give, uh, actually it was done in the prior court, 100000 for equipment for the wellness center. Now, I was not a big fan of that just because it's a private business. A lot of people think Ohio County Wellness Center is owned by Ohio County, and, it, and it's not. And the only reason I wasn't on that because of the fact that it is it is a private business, and we can't give 100000 to all the private businesses out there in the county to try to help aid them and keep them running and, and help them. But hopefully it did. Um, and maybe that'll keep them going much better. I'd, I'd rather seen that money go into the park systems and stuff that was owned by the county that the constituents, you know, would see that that was taxpayers' money going into tax uh, to county-owned ground and county-owned facilities. But that's, uh, I think it's something we need to keep going and looking at avenues. And if I'm elected in again, I'm going to look, keep looking at our parks and see how we can aid them and better them. Thank you. We neglected to give a chance for our candidates to introduce themselves. We did. I apologize for that. Well, I forgive you. So, <laughs> what we can do is, if you want, just to make sure when you answer your next question, Joe, you did a great job of it, thank you, of introducing who you are, <clears throat> what your district, and, and Jason, too, I apologize for I didn't, they, they didn't. Okay. So, just make sure, just on this next round, do that, and then at the end, before we go to community well, questions, uh, we'll give you all two minutes to talk about yourselves and sure. your positions. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Barnes, we're going to start with you this time for the next question. We'll work our way back down, okay? The majority of businesses and restaurants have self-regulated to smoke-free environments. Would you as a magistrate follow their lead and implement a smoke-free ordinance that offers the same protection in all public buildings and venues? This has come up in the court, and uh, I've told my opinion there, and I've, I've looked into the ordinances that was presented to the court before, and there was some issues I did bring up about the uh, uh, businesses that's connected to a home places where it would actually intrude on their their personal space at home as far as it, you know if they run a home a business out of their home they couldn't smoke on the front porch and they couldn't smoke their back porch or anything connected to that dwelling which I don't think is right but also this goes to all the businesses that's open to the public as far as this isn't just restaurants I think there's not a business that I go into that I run into a smoking problem so I don't see it as an issue to have to fix but this runs into all the mechanic shops uh, any kind of business that you would go to to get any kind of service it would be a smoking ban they would not be allowed to smoke in the business or in the back of the business or anything and I think that is kind of overstepping our bounds of government I'm not for it I would, I would vote against it, uh, but I have not seen the latest ordinance. They said there's some things that's changed, and I would be willing to read over all of them, but if, it, if it's to that extent, I would not be for it. And I'm also worried about whenever you make mandates like that as far as government reg regulations is how you police it and how you're going to enforce it and what's the cost of that going to be and you know where you're going to come up with the funds to police it to uh, you're gonna look at having to add a tax to uh, come up with enough money to police that, you know, and make sure everybody's abiding by it. Because you can put a law out there, but if it's not being policed, it's, it's no good than the paper it's wrote on. So that would be issues I would wanna see too. But as of right now, from what I've seen, I would be a no on it. As I've been around the county, uh, when I first came here 15 years ago, uh, there was a few businesses that had it and uh, you know my main concern was uh, the secondhand smoke and the children that, that were going into these businesses but uh, I think it's you know I would vote yes on it uh, 
you know, because it's, it's not healthy. We have so many cancer patients as it is. Uh, both of my parents died, <clears throat> died from cancer, one of them from smoking. So you know, I, I would definitely uh, be for it in, in that aspect, definitely. Uh, well, I was on the school board, and we passed the ordinance for smoke-free facilities in all of our schools and stuff. So I would be for that because I, my dad died of cancer, and so did my mother-in-law did. And so I would be definitely against that, and I would vote yes for the ordinance. And, and I've got some sisters that smoke and all that, and I stay on them all the time about it. But, I mean, they're hard-headed just like a lot of other people are, but they're going to do what they want to do. But I still think they need to be out by themselves, whatever, if they want to. And just like when they come over to my house, they're outside smoking. They're not allowed to smoke in my house or nothing like that. So I would be for a smoke-free ordinance. I'm one of the two David was talking about. Uh, I'm for a smoke-free uh, ordinance. Um, a few of the things I look at is that, you know, it, it, people say, well, it's invading on rights. Well, you're also invading on rights when you both smoke into them. And so I would be for it. And another one reason you look at it for is not only for the health its reasons, but I look at the economic reasons too. Most people that have gone smoke-free said their businesses have picked up. That's beside the point. That was their decision. Great for them. But I look at, too, that we're wanting to bring business into Ohio County. And every conference, every economic forum you go to, there are several things they look at. Your parks. You know, what, what do you have for people in Ohio County? That's one thing we're looking into. We're addressing that. Another one is, what is the health rate in Ohio County? Are we going to be able to come into your community and man our jobs? Or if we are going to man them, are they going to be able to be there? Or are they going to be sick all the time? So that's one reason I'm looking at that. I'm serious about bringing a business into Ohio County. I'm serious about bringing small business. And you've got to look at those things. And I look at it, somebody said, well, you'll be one of the first in the state to do it. Well, that's great. I don't want to be the last in the state to do it. I really think the state should already have done it. But uh, as far as me, yes, I'm for a smoke-free Ohio County. Um, and we do look at, we have changed in the ordinance. In private homes, you can smoke. Unless it's health-related care you're doing or child-related care. So if you have a business in your home, that was addressed. Um, but for me, it's one magistrate I am for a smoke-free ordinance. Thank you. Mr. Bullock, we're going to start with you and allow you to introduce yourselves um, and just work your way. To that time, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's all right. We're going to work our way back down the table, and then we'll open the floor up uh, for questions. Okay. My name is Jason Bullock. I am the second district manager right now. I'm running for my fourth term. Uh, we did, I was sitting on the uh, smoke free committee last time and uh, we looked at, we made changes. I'm on the smoke free committee this time. I would like to see it try to pass and go up for a vote sometime soon in the near future. Uh, so, yes, I'm Jason Bullock. I represent the second district in Ohio County. Um, thank you for having me here. I'm Dwight Raymond. I'm running for second district. Second District Magistrate. I am on the school board representative for the second district, and um, I am just enjoying the opportunity to run for this position. And hopefully, that everything goes. I'm just happy to be here. My name is Marty Tishner. I'm running for third district magistrate of Ohio County. I spent most of my life in public service. I was the deputy sheriff in Atlanta, Georgia, for 17 years, and. Uh, I'm currently chairman of the Ohio County Airport Board, where I've been serving Ohio County for the last year and a half. I've made a lot of improvements over there, and I've, I've really enjoyed uh, working with state and local and county officials. I've been able to go out and secure $645,000 of improvements for the airport so far, and we're still working on ongoing projects. And uh, I, I really enjoyed that role. Uh, I do it. I don't get any salary for it. Uh, I just I enjoy it every day, and uh, I've just enjoyed serving the people of Ohio County, and I, I look forward uh, to the opportunity to be magistrate for the 3rd District. Thank you. My name is Joe Barnes, 3rd District Magistrate right now, uh, four years for the last term, and uh, in the engineering uh, career, I actually worked for uh, coal mines right now for the last 10 years here locally in the, in the county, and um, 
just enjoy doing the master job. It's, it's, there's sometimes there's not always great reward with it, but then there's rewards behind the scenes, and it's just something you gotta kind of love to do, you know, to serve the people. But uh, anyway, just been uh, thankful to be out there to serve the people. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna have CC draw numbers for questions. We'll I'm gonna let somebody else draw. Okay. Okay, Mr. Tishner, we'll start with you on this question, and then we'll give it to Mr. Barnes, and then we'll pass it to Mr. Raymond and then Mr. Bull. Six, four, five, seven, eight, eight, two. This is something I'm just super passionate about. Um, I'm not, you know, being offensive in any way. Um, Joe, I'm thankful for saying anything. I'm thankful for what you've done in our district, down in your district. But um, I'm curious. Uh, all of you said you're for it. Thank you. I'm curious. My children, I choose, chose to raise them away from smoke their whole life. There's not one person they're ever around that smokes. Our whole family, no one. So that to them, they do not think it's normal to smoke. But when we go out in public, they do not want to be around smoke. They literally hold their breath from the moment they see a smoker to the moment they pass that smoker and get inside a building. And I do not think that's right that my children and I myself should have to hold their breath before we get inside of a building to where we feel like, oh, okay, because we care about our health and we don't want to breathe in any type of smoke ever. It's something that they were that passionate about. Um, we go to their businesses daily that I go to and they can tell you, you know, where we go and where we encounter that on a daily basis, um, that they hold their breath to go in. And, you know, we kind of make a joke of it, but it's shameful that we have to hold our breath to get past the people who are smoking, you know, right at the door of a business. They're literally like five feet away from the door of the business. We have to encounter them. We cannot get around them. There's no way to get around them. We have to encounter them to get into that business. A restaurant, um, you know, different all mainly, sorry, I love you. <laughs> but, um, you know, that's what we encounter and that's what we deal with. So to me, it's a no brainer that it's, you know, for the safety of our children, for the respect for our children, respect for the people, that there should be an ordinance in place that there's, they have to be a certain distance to where we can get around them because we don't have to encounter that smoke ever because we choose not to smoke. I think you had some good points, and, and and my issue with it is, is you know, from what I read, is how far does it does, does it allow the law to go to intervene with other people in their business? Now, you know, you're still going to be around it going into the businesses because what I've seen is they're they're going to restrict it down to less than 20 feet, so you're going to come into it. But you know, it's just other issues I've looked into with it too is how far does it extend the government overreaching and then also how are we going to police it where are the funds going to come to actually have people out there to enforce it because if you if you mandate it and then there's no one enforcing it they're just going to do it anyway and then where are, you, where are you going to be at on that but just to clear the air on that i'm smoke free never smoked a day in my life my wife has not either and we we stay away from it and we keep our daughter away from it uh, the best we can and there is sometimes that you, you run into the people that, that are not courteous uh, and does not have the respect for other ones that choose not to do it and the ones that do choose to do it and and I most of the time I run into the, most of the people that seem to be courteous about it but uh, until I've read the latest ordinance you know I'm not seeing it in the restaurants of where I go or the stores or, or the businesses I go to so that's where I'm coming from do you you know, do you put a law on there that's going to outreach all the the businesses in the county that most of us could either choose not to go to or and let it be up to them? But that's 
that's where we're at. And I appreciate you, you know, tell me your your point of view on it, and and I'll look into it some more. But as of right now, that's that's where I'm at on it. Uh, I agree with you totally. Uh, like I said earlier, the secondhand smoke issue and the children is uh, the main thing I, that I'm thinking of. You know, years ago we had a restaurant in Beaver Dam. I'm sure many of you remember it. I ate there frequently. Well, I held my breath from the front door to the back to walk through the smoke also. And uh, I, I'm totally for the smoking ban. And if there's any way that we could to get, to get the people from doing it in front, uh, you know, it's gonna be worth it for our health and our children. Thank you. sides of the hospice is a wonderful organization dealt with them for 13 years or 12 years I was I'm a licensed funeral director bomber so I've seen that side and I also work at Beaver Dam Elementary now for the last 13 years so I've went from one end to the other end so yes I know what you're talking about that but um, I will admit if there is a flaw right now that's gonna kind of be it I think it can be done we will and there are fines and fees it's just going to be, are you going to do it, help us get on board and do it or not? And 
it's I'm not going to be with Joe. It is going to be a little bit difficult thing. It's easy passing it if we can get a pass. Well, maybe it's not easy because we've been trying for. It's maybe it's not, but that is going to be the thing. If there's going to be some details, we're really going to have to look into and push. But I am willing to do it. I think um, most others would be too. But um, if there is a if there is a, a kink, maybe we're going to have to look into once it's it's going to be that there are the fees, but then you're going to make sure are they doing it? Are you checking it out? And it's in there. I don't have the ordinance with me right now, but it's. There are some things we're going to have to work through once that comes through. And uh, we are looking into it. We meet, uh, like I said, we tweaked a few things in there for it. But um, we are going to look into that. Uh, and I do want to say, because I've noticed several people, like I know Angie, a good friend of mine. I know people that I love. I do want people to know I'm not trying, we're not saying, oh, you smoke. It's, listen, I don't eat healthy. But what we're trying to say is I'm not judging somebody for smoking. I just want you to realize that when you're smoking, it's going on somebody else. You're you're imposing on somebody else's. And I, so I can't. I'm looking out for your rights because we will never go into your house and take away that right as long as it's there. But you, we have to look at the other person's right too. That the smoke's blowing in their their face. So that's what we're looking to. We're protecting one right, but yet we're looking into another right too of somebody else's. So you got to be careful how you do it. But I do want to say we're not here to judge. We're just protecting those because most people are courteous. Some aren't. I just feel like it's the best uh, move for our county to make us look progressive. Six four five seven eight seven zero. Eight seven zero. I didn't get to respond to that last. Oh, sorry, Joe. Sorry. I thought we were going to go down the line, so. Okay, we're welcome to let you respond. If you ever have that ticket, you're on deck. But anyway, you did bring up a good point. And, you know, as physical court members, whenever we do something, everything that we do up there, there's always a, you know, with an action, there's always consequences and everything that needs to be thought out truly. And, you know, the expense on how we're going to do it. Actually, Jason's been the first one that, that I know that's brought up and said that, you know, there is going to be more costly and how are we going to get it done other than you know there's um, there's always fees that you're going to apply if you catch someone doing it wrong but you know that's something you've got to look at when you're sitting on the court and i don't know how expensive it would be but that needs to be kind of out and open too and that's just some of the issues that i see with it but you know the ordinance that i've looked at it went as far as you couldn't you couldn't smoke in a home that was connected to a business that was, you know, might have been open as far as a sun tanning business or a, um, a garage hooked to their house or something like that. And so I felt like that was way overreaching, but uh, and I still think it's overreaching to some of these pri these small businesses that's out in the county. But I haven't seen the latest ordinance, and we'll take a look at it. Six four five seven eight six four. Say it one more time. Ticket ending in eight six four. I think it's rigged. You get the it last one. I, I, yeah, I, I, I think it's rigged. How many tickets do you have? Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> so as many lotto tickets as I yeah, want. You, 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 should, you yeah. should go yeah. get some lotto tickets. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to give you two bucks. Uh, and I thought you could just not. I, I kept it above board. I oh, I'm just saying. It's taped on the side. Um, <laughs> it is. I want to say there have been a lot of great questions brought up tonight about many areas of health. Our focus, it seems, from a group as a whole is on the smoke-free ordinance. Um, I have been privileged that I got to sit on that committee with Jason and Rebecca Horn. Um, it also is represented with a large and small business sit on that committee because in the workplace, a smoke-free environment is very important. Sometimes we don't get to choose where we work. We may need that job, and we, need, we spend a lot of time in that environment, so we want those smoke-free environments in the workplace. So we wanted their voice heard. So 
the ordinance, something I'm hearing that we should have done is made sure every one of our candidates had a copy of the updated ordinance. And I want to make a pledge to each of you all, our judge executive candidates, all of our matrix candidates, I will personally deliver by the end of the week a, a, an updated copy of the ordinance. I will email you or I will bring it to you however you need it. I'm going to make sure you get that. Um, I want to go back, Joe, to you because I want to say I appreciate what you've done. You have supported health care in Ohio County on many, many levels. Your wife is in health care. She's a valued co-worker to me. And I, I want to say I don't want you to feel like you, you, you stood up and you said this is not what I'm supporting. So a lot of those right. questions are coming to you. But I want to make sure you get the credit that there have been many times I've come in front of the physical court and all of our magistrates have said, Yes, we're going to support Ohio County Health Care. We're going to export, support increased access to care in this community. All of them have done that, and I appreciate that. I do want to clarify, if I can, from you, what is that added expense? From sitting on the committee, and Rebecca, you know the ordinance better than I do, I'm not sure where the added expense of the well, small ordinance. Who would go out and actually make sure that there's businesses following the law, you know, like the mechanics in the back of the shop and that you know, is connected to the front of the business, uh, who's going to actually enforce, enforce because, it? Because, you know, you get to the point where this business over here isn't enforcing it, and in these business, you know, maybe there's some people in this business, they're like, well, they ain't going to do anything. We're just going to go ahead and do as we want. And so I What think, are other ordinances do we have in our community? You have to educate me on that. What other ordinances do we enforce now? Seatbelt. State law. State law. State law. State law. Is there other there's a, I don't know of any other ones other than, you know, that's in the city. And I know when I think Beaver Dam added some of the ordinances, they had to add an extra officer and everything. So what I'm asking is, are we going to put this off on the sheriff's deputies? Or are we going to, are we going to have a extra person that's, that goes out and polices this? And, and it's just does question. that. I think you that's know, a because great question. It, it needs to be, it needs to be looked at because you, you. Okay, so I what? think that that, I, and I don't know, I think that that's a great thing to look at. I guess in my thoughts sitting on the committee, it probably would fall under the realm of our, our local law enforcement. Well, and see, when you add that to the law enforcement, you know, they, they sometimes, you know, I hear a lot of complaints yeah. that it's hard to police the, uh, the speed, speed limits like it needs to, but, you know, we're, because of the fact that You've only got so many officers, they've got a sure. budget, they've got more dire issues at the time, you know. I, I get going it. out there and 100 percent So it's they're, like they're definitely gonna have to if you're and you have a heart attack, you're getting in first before you've got a cut. So I understand. So that. you're definitely if you're gonna put it off in the police department, you're gonna have to add officers that will do just this or or a officer. So if, I think one way to look at it too in, in that aspect is while their ordinances will be glad. And one thing I've loved about you, Joe, is you've read the ordinance as we have brought it up. You've come to us with requests, and we've had a chance to investigate those requests and respond. We'll do the same for this. I think that that is a great thing. We need to look at a methodology, how to address it. You know, we just started a new budget in the 1st of July, and we've already mm -hmm. had the sheriff come back because of uh, issues in, in the budget, extra demands, and, and uh, just $4,500 the other day, you know, that we had sure. to take out a surplus to put in, in this. So, we, you know, it's stuff that we need to have ahead of time so we can be put in the budget and we need to know how we're going to actually come up with the, the money sure. to take care of it. And so we'll, we can address that. One thing I was wanted to address is one thing, we can go to other counties and we'll look when they right. have ordinance in place. What did they do? We're not the first I, ones to I do this. That Some is a uh, countywide plan and zoning. Okay. Well, another way that that is handled in some communities, if someone goes into, if you have an ordinance and it's it's publicized and it's posted in the business that this is a smoke-free place and it's not being honored, then the person that is, you don't have to have a police officer going around to police that. What they do is if then they come back to the court or to a designated officer of the court make a complaint and a fine is is automatically delivered if they have proof yeah and that, and that but i mean someone's going to have to actually look into that because you know i, I mean that's all great if you got upstanding people coming in and with a complaint but 
unfortunately, sometimes people that's making a complaint against somebody else isn't always doing on the up and up in the truthful side of it. So well, you would have I to have the evidence, my, my and you still have to you still I have to have someone investigate that. it. But sure. if we've got thirty percent of our citizens are smoking, that means that we've got sixty percent that are exposed to secondhand smoke. I think those are, and you talk about as it relates to bringing an in industry. I wouldn't want to bring an industry in if I thought my workers would be out sick, and smokers are out sick more than non-smokers. And I think that's what, when you talk about on the businesses, I think that's that is looked at more than you know. Are we going to be smoke free countywide? Uh, then you know they're going to look at actually how many people smoke in the county and the health of the of the employee, employees that they're going to be drawing from and actually making someone quit or you know see that they need to quit you know I encourage people to because it's better for their health but you know I don't think a countywide smoke ban that's going to just outreach maybe 10 or 15 feet from the front door of a business is going to do that but that that could be my mistake but that's what I'm seeing and you know I will I will always keep looking at the ordinances as they're brought up to me but you know I'm just telling you as I see it from where I stand on it because that's from what I information that I've been given and what I've dug into and in research I wouldn't be forward at this time just for clarification and Davis and Henderson we uh, the health department will see the ordinances in both those counties uh, it is a pretty self-enforcing we would get calls the first six months of both of those ordinances Davis has been 2005 I think Henderson's 2008 we do not get any of those calls anymore um, last call I got was on TGI Friday just because they were on the patio and they were well within the ordinance um, so we it's a the health department goes in if we see even evidence of smoke we'll sign a ticket we call the, the police department were called in you know at, at a diner usually a little diner at lunch and they came in told them to quit I don't think Davis County has even ever issued a fine so we, we have never issued any type of fine in Davis County and I believe Henderson may be an issue one or two. So, and after that, people just think, expect. Yeah, I think it's, it's yeah. kind of second. And, and that's kind of what you want to get into. You, you want to get this the norm not to. You know, so like I said, I'm not judging, but you want to be an arc. The more you can get away from it, the more our kids are saying it's not a norm. And you're getting your 33% down to 20, 15. And that's what you want to work on. We're working on a health community. And the way I look at the ordinance is, is you know, we have speed limits. We know people speed and they don't get caught. But are we going to give? Are we going to take away the speed limits? No, we have speed limits for a reason because it helps. It saves lives. That's kind of what we're doing here too. Yeah, we're probably there. Somebody going to smoke a cigarette in the business, and we're not going to catch it. But what we're trying to do is to catch it and, and, and say we don't want this. So we are at seven thirty. Um, I'll stay as long as anybody has questions, but I don't want to keep our candidates. So we can wrap it up for the night. I've got a question. Are our candidates good with additional questions? I'm Do you want us picture. to bring our judge executive candidates up here and, and so that they can participate in this part too? Be fine. Y'all want to come on up? I just want to Okay. <laughs> We appreciate that. Come on up, Judge and, and Brandon Thomas. I think that this way, we'll, you all give me the signal when you're ready to stop taking questions or if you're available afterwards, people may want to come up to you. I'm good as long as people want to ask. I love that, Joe. We appreciate it. Uh, now, who would you like to direct the question to? Well, either the magistrate or David. Okay. And my question is, when an inmate is in jail, why does the jailer keep half of the money when you take to an inmate? Why do they keep half of it and what does it go for? I really can't answer that. Uh, I would have to ask the jailer that, and I don't know the particulars of that. And uh, that's one of the hardest things for me to ever say is that I don't know but I'm afraid I'm going to have to use that this time. And uh, I wasn't prepared for it by asking the jailer so I know the answer, so I don't think I can. I'll let everybody else try to, though. I don't have an answer for that. I mean, I, first, I don't know the particulars of it. 
I, I have no idea of it, so. It's very simple. When you give an inmate money, flip takes half of it. Now, what's it go for? Well, I can't answer you on that one. Like say, uh, maybe Rips could answer that question to you. I'm sure he could. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Ma'am, I sit on the court right now, and that's the first I've heard of that. I'll check into it. Uh, not aware of that situation, and uh, I could not tell you why right now. You know, and I'll speak for as one person that sits on the court too. It's a magistrate. I'm not sure. I've not heard that either. Sorry. I was going to say that that's something we'll check into because that's the first on both of those. Thank you very much. We appreciate your questions. And anytime you want to, you know, we've got we've got court meetings every every I second and fourth. Do them all the time. Okay. Well, if you ever got a question, because it's the first time I've heard these two, you're welcome to come. And uh, actually, I've got a lot of literature out that's got my number on it. And you're welcome to call me, and I can look into it ahead of time. But I will try to find out an answer. Well, and, and I really don't know. I would like to see uh, a show of hands or, or maybe ask or mention to me later because I can't speak of any place that I know of uh, that still allows smoking. I mean, years ago, well, I'm saying that I go into, sure. uh, years ago, you go into Walmart, people were smoking, putting the cigarettes on the floor. Um, as far as I know, all the restaurants, as far as I know, like I say, I would like to be made aware of that. I'm not saying there isn't. I would just like to have some input if, if there's some of these places. I know several years ago, the bowling alley allowed smoking, which mm -hmm. that's no longer in business. Uh, the diner at Fordsville used to allow smoking. They're smoke free. Uh, honestly, I don't know of a place, and I'm not saying there isn't, but I would like to know where these are as well. Well, I think what we've been seeing, there are some individual businesses that smoke and as people enter those doorways, they are smoking. Um, we've seen at public venues at, um, I had someone text me earlier um, in the day because I knew we were having our forum and it was at our Ohio County Parks. It was on our, our rec league soccer team and there was a gentleman standing right on the sideline where you know the soccer player is going to have to come and potentially yes. put the ball in and he's standing there and you just see this big plume of smoke coming out where he's standing right there on the sideline of a kid's soccer game smoking. Yeah. No, Sometimes in our school know. systems, we still see in our sporting events smoking. I know that there's an ordinance or a, a regulation in place, but there are just different venues that we still see smoking. And that's what Is I there? brought up. You know, they're smoke free and you're still seeing it at their facility. So I want everybody to also realize that, you know, it's not a Cut sure. dry answer to the problem. You know? But it, sure, it does and, give a and basis. And I, to start I thought with. a lot of your ordinance just addressed the uh, actual buildings. I didn't know about there grounds. Public, there's public venues. So, public, so um, would the public, uh, say the city parks, the county parks, was, is that is that where most of the concern is? I'm just asking a question because um, I, I would like to know where where you're running into this. And, I know. And the audience is welcome to. Yeah, that's. I would like to ask the audience to raise their hand or. Tell us where they're running into Shout this. Shout it out. Well, what I see a lot of, and this is the last sheep talking here, is people will get out of their cars at Walmart, mm -hmm. light a cigarette up, and walk to the door, smoking that cigarette, going up to the door, going, and then, and then put it out, or throw it down, or whatever, and you're, you're catching that thing. I don't smoke in my house. I don't smoke in my business. I don't have smoke around in front of my business. Um, if somebody comes to my house, you know, there's this uh, a butt bucket on my floor for them so I, I don't have it in my house but a lot of the people the customers <laughs> are walking straight up to the doors with their cigarettes and you know yeah. so we'll would, see that all would this smoking ordinance that you have in place um, would it take Probably. care of would it or propose yeah would it take care of those people walking up to within 20 feet of Walmart's entry doors I mean would that it would, it, that would not be, I don't think by anybody's definition, a reasonable distance if, if you're in front of the door, so that would take care of part of that. And if, as far as outdoor spaces, unless it's a school system event, it would only be the outdoor seating of like an amphitheater type place. It wouldn't be like the entire park. It would be like a seating area, like a concert venue, outdoor concert venue. Yeah. It could like still be a smoking area. The designated smoking. See, that's just, I want people to realize too, you know, what I've seen, 
you know, they're talking about the parking lots and everything. We're talking about even, you know, the ordinance restricting it down closer than 20 feet of the, because, you know, like they're on Hartford and everything, we're 20 feet and you're out in the street. But, you know, it's not going to take care of the parking lots or anything. We're out there smoking as they're going up the door. It might be right there in front of the door, but you're going to, you're going to still be encountering it. So, you know, it's, it's something that everybody ought to look at. There's actually a business in Hartford that ironically has a sign that says smoke free environment. Right below that sign is where all the workers in that business go out, step right outside the door to smoke, and they put their butts in that. Well, I actually do this business there, but unlike this young lady back here, I get out of my car, I hold my breath until I can get into that business. Same thing when I leave the business, I hold my breath, but my clothes smell like smoke. If one of their workers is out there smoking, I sit in my car until she's done because there's no way to avoid that. But I find it so ironic that there's a sign that says smoke for environment, yet there's three or four of their employees that are smoking there. It looks like a fog and I can't go in there unless I choose to breathe their second hand smoke. I think the smoking ordinance would cover that considering it's the only entrance to go into that building. I don't have another way to go conduct my business unless I walk through all of that. But would that cover that? I would say that would not be a reasonable distance. But it's right there at the door. Yeah, I mean, that's not reasonable in anybody's definition of reasonable. Yeah. So, I mean, I would think that would cover. Mr. Howard. I'm backing up a few. I'm, I'm sorry, I'll pay you back. I'll shut up after this. I, I just want to say that there's been concern about cost of enforcement. Uh, I don't see if there's been any at all. Uh, our law enforcement, our health department, everybody enforces a lot of law, laws, a lot of codes. Uh, I don't see that there would be any a cost for enforcement. Uh, if people see them doing it, they'll call in a complaint. If a policeman walks in the door and sees it, he can enforce it. I don't see there being any additional cost whatsoever to enforce the ordinance. That's all I got. My question is, does this, uh, I'm sorry. Did I You're fine, you can address whomever you'd like uh, on that. This ordinance, does it include like electronic cigarettes and vaping too, or is it just smoking tobacco? Okay. In the model ordinance, it's pretty close to all electronic cigarettes and vaping. Yes, they still produce. Yes, did any, did you, any of our candidates want to comment on that? Brandon. Well, for instance, at my shop, there's, there's no smoking up front. Um, there's really, there's a waiting room, but would this encompass if a mechanic in the back was smoking? Um, because that's not public access area. So would they be allowed to smoke in the in the garage shop that's not public access? The smoking, or? the purpose of a smoking ordinance is not, it's public protection, but it's first and foremost worker protection. Uh, this would include any type of workplace. So any so, worker that would show up for a work shift should not be allowed to work in any enclosed environment. In a, if I have one employee then, and they happen to be a smoker if they're in the back of the shop where the, the public is not allowed to be but they are also banned from smoking inside of my facility. It is a workplace smoking. They would have to go outside. All work, all workplaces because first and foremost if the public comes in and out which is dangerous to the public but people who stay you know in a, in a workplace that's, that's the people who are affected the most. So even, even businesses with just one uh, one employee. I work for RC Cola, and our owner has put a smoke-free ordinance in us. We're not allowed to smoke in the plant, and, or in a vehicle, or anything like that. And she, and she, it's a threat to be fired and all that if you get caught with it. And so I mean, if you're gonna have to police it yourself. A lot of this stuff you're gonna. The owners of the business and all that, they're the ones who's gonna have to do a lot of the policing of it. To get it to work. Ordinance, though, that gives that owner some um, support. Yes. Something to stand on. Yeah. That's just like this with us. We're not allowed to even 
smoke or anything in the vehicle. And we have to be outside the building that we work on in, and we're not allowed. To. So and you're saying, yes, and I think that like one thing that we're looking at is the fact that um, a smoke ordinance isn't going to solve all problems. I think we all know that. It does help create, I think as Mr. Bullock stated, a cultural norm and a start to solutions to a problem that we know exists. We want to make sure we're supporting the smoker and the non-smoker. So by doing that, we're here to to not take away anyone's rights, but to help you to protect the people who don't smoke. And if you do smoke, to make sure you have resources available to you. And Ms. Barnes, I believe you had a question on oh, that's that. Right. Then you got a question back in the yeah. Okay, we've got just a nice young lady in the back. Um, I understand that you know everybody wanting the non-smoking ordinance. But from seeing what I see, like I was in Orangeboro all day today and it's a non-smoking ordinance, right? Except for the bars. Only okay. the Well, Chick-fil-A, Walmart, you still got people smoking right there at the door. So what good is the ordinance really doing? I mean, they've got a non-smoking ordinance. But they're literally still standing right there smoking at the door and smoking going to the door and talking to the customer at Walmart and they got nothing done. So I mean, what's the point of doing it? Well, um, first of all, we did change a reasonable, a uh, reasonable distance from the door. Personally, I don't like that. Yeah, I was right there. Yeah, I don't. You know, what's reasonable distance? That is just to appease to try to get the ordinance passed. Okay, because we're gonna. We're going to say this, or we're going to change this, or we're going to change that, and they're going to say, well, what about this, and what about this, and we're going to continue to change. I would like to see a, a distance, okay? And I know there's some places that you're going to have a hard time getting that distance. I understand that. But the, the, as far as the ordinances, what I look at it is it's showing that Ohio County is progressive. We're moving in the right direction. Is it always going to be perfect? No, like I said, people still speed, but we have speed limits. People do not use their seatbelts, and they... Should they? We all know they should. And should should we not have those because some people aren't doing it? Should no, we shouldn't. Enforce it just the same as they would a speeding ticket? I, th I think that we should enforce it, yes. If it's not being enforced, I mean, that's the problem. That's Davis County, I, you know. And, yeah. and I'm hoping... I don't know, that, yeah. I don't know if how the law enforcement here would work. And I, and I don't know, you, but if we pass an ordinance... There are going to be people that's, that's going to slip through the cracks and we're going to miss something. I'm going to sit here and tell you that. I can't tell you we're going to be 100%, but I'm hoping over time, like they said, Davis County, it got to be where itself. People know they don't do it. And I'm hoping we go from 33% and we get close to the state average. And then I'm hoping we go below the state average. I wish the state of Kentucky's health rate was better than 49 other states. Okay, I think that's one thing that keeps us behind. And that's why we need to start looking to move in the right direction and that's what I, that's the reason I want to do it okay I'm not trying to judge anybody we all have our faults we all have problems but we we do need to start moving away we could sit there and say what if and well this might happen or this might happen and never get anything done but you got to keep moving in the right direction slowly a little bit at a time and that's what I'm looking at trying to do Tiffany, you have yeah. her hand up? I think we've talked about it. So. Well, I think, Ms. Howard, we can continue to Okay, so I've got this gentleman. i got this gentleman. Tiffany, did you have a question? And. Three questions? Three questions, and we can. You all tell me when you're ready to stop. We're waiting that time. I think we're ready after that. Um, you, sir. Actually, I do not have a question for the court system itself. My question is for the Ohio County Health Coalition. Yes, sir. We say 30% smoke, 60% no, no, and we're trying to separate them, in, so to say. Sure. But do we have a program in this county or through the health system to do, uh, prevent people from smoking, to work Excellent through question. smoking? Yes. So, uh, how can a health coalition, one of our primary objectives is to um, prevent substance abuse. And one thing that we do through our local health department, actually in my hand I have a flyer right here. It's called Free Nicotine Replacement Therapy. Um, I work with Ohio County Healthcare. We offer free smoking cessation courses to our community. Um, we have, Becky, how many different programs do you, we think that we could offer to our community that would aid them in an effort to um, stop smoking or 
any tobacco cessation. We have several trade and health buildings there, so we offer classes anytime that we have people interested. Uh, we also have that right now. We have nineteen thousand uh, dollars to, to uh, provide Green River residents. That's all seven of our counties free nicotine replacement by calling one eight hundred quit now, which is a counseling service. So you would have your own counselor uh, that you would get five six counseling services. Plus your NRT would be shipped to your door uh, up to eight weeks. So that's at no cost to you, saving about eighty bucks. So we, we also have, have school school-based programs for yes, our youth because well, okay. we know if we stop it before they if we can get them not to start it's well, bad. and that was my point yes. try to prevent it 100 percent 30 percent prevention the second cause Pre and all health care prevention is key and we as a health yes. coalition we focus on the prevention efforts so that we're not here trying to solve problems that already exist but if you do smoke we're here to help you there's no judgment with this come on do you not have programs in the high school too and stuff like that? Becky, were you not there? Uh, no, uh, Mr. Briggins said the high school has always been very good. Okay. I cover all freshman classes. Um, because my daughter said you were there today. She said, Oh, you're a manager. She, she said, and she said, Well, my dad's a manager. She said, Well, she's a. <laughs> so, yeah, I know this. Like, oh, yeah. You're going to get my phone number out. <laughs> One thing that I think y'all might want to look at as a coalition, yes. uh, because I see it as kind of more at an epidemic with the uh, young people is the uh, vaping you 100%. know they uh how big of a cloud of smoke can i blow is what it seems to be and uh you know i'm just because i'm not really in support of this of this rule because i don't think it's going to affect everybody you know the, the vaping it, we don't even know what those what we don't the chemicals for that's come out of them will cause years down the road but you know they're they're taking it right to the doorway, but they're they're blowing a big enough cloud. They they could be thirty foot away and blow it at you, and it, it, you're going to walk through it. So I I mean I don't know. I, evidently, I've been told that you can turn them up, you can do all this different stuff, and I think it's just kind of the the new cool fade, you know, fad, you know, about the uh, enjoying what it, what I don't know what it is, but you know they they like it. But anyway, that's that's going to be the next thing that probably it would, if you're looking at prevention to get ahead of. We have a. And I have teenagers, Becky, and I'm still not hip enough to know what is the difference in vaping and jeweling? Or jeweling is a small one. Vaping is like the big thing you see, the big, yeah. you know, the big hype looking thing with big cloud. Jewel looks like a flash drive. It's very small. It doesn't give off a lot of odor or a cloud, so it's very disguisable. And so when my kids say they're studying. Yeah, they could be in the bathroom. It's like you're not gonna have this big wall of smoke. <coughs> back, in, back in the nineties if you smoke in the bathroom, you know it's coming out the, the door there, but now you don't have it. It's easy to hard to that. Joe, we're about to rewrite our go into our new um, two year or three year cycle for our strategic community needs assessment. We will certainly take that input and we'll look at it. We've got this toolkit. I'll let the magistrates know. So well, some of the younger ones I've talked to, you know, they say, well, this isn't bad for me, but sure. they don't even know how bad that can be. It'll, it'll take 20 years for them to realize how sure. bad vaping can be. So, Just you know. like in tobacco, you know, 20 yeah. years ago, 30 years ago. Yeah, so, you know, it might be something to now get ahead of and, and maybe try to start something in the, in the school system. You know, because that's where you got to start. So like April said she starts with her kids. I'm starting, you know, I started a long time ago with mine. Prevention, but, just assistance. But there you go. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna say something too, because uh, the baby. Okay, I'm sitting here laughing at my wife. We don't smoke. We have, we have a uh, a son that we love, and he's tried vaping, and we've got him. So um, you know, the one thing I'm gonna say is, as a court member, we're gonna try everything we can. To do our part but this goes back with anything i work with kids every day okay parenting's not easy and even the best parents can have kids that uh, do things wrong but be on top of your kids be involved in their life and be, you know we love cole we've got him he's suffering the consequences okay we didn't just pat him on the back and say you're okay no you gotta be a parent i always tell i'm telling i'm not your best friend i'm your dad Okay, so you know, the court's going to do our part, but it takes parenting to do your part too. And sometimes that's not easy, but uh, you know.
you know, that's one thing I could throw in because I deal with that in school every day, too. Just that in, in, in general, yeah, that type of scenario. Yeah. Uh, to um, how familiar, familiar are you with the latest research on third hand smoke? I can't say that I am. It may be worth looking into. I'm just saying, um, I, I wouldn't want somebody working on my vehicle with a smoker or smoking around my vehicle. Okay. You might want to look into it. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Richards. I want to change directions a little bit and ask the court that the baby boomers are coming of age and there will be more need for accessibility in the county and this is something that's dear to my heart because my wife is in our wheelchair and if she came to this building tonight by herself someone would have to open up the door for her. Most of your businesses have buttons that you push and the door opens. Same thing with our courthouse. In the back, there may be an intercom, but she would still have to wait for someone to come. And another thing at the courthouse, there's <coughs> one handicapped accessible parking space. Could we see about getting the one in front of it so that there would be two? Because that's a lot of area around the courthouse for only one, one parking space. I would like to answer that. Um, as, I, as a magistrate previously on the court, uh, brought to the attention to the court that the at that time the community center did not have a handicap accessible restroom throughout the whole building. Um, luckily, the court we all worked together and agreed that that should be done, and so there is now one handicap accessible restroom at uh, behind the auditorium there. Um, that was the same case at the courthouse which which is there across the street you're speaking of there was not a handicap accessible restroom uh, we as a court worked together um, some thought that that was an expensive restroom it was a it was a men and women's restroom uh, two separate restrooms and it was a was a cost a pretty pretty great cost when you think of two restrooms but but I as one thought that that was worthwhile at uh, because I do understand the uh, there are people with uh, disabilities that may not be able to get in to use the restroom. Um, the elevator is a great expense. Yes, yeah. So I mean, I for one, and I'm sure everyone up here would agree that we will always strive to take care of anyone with any handicap. Thank you. Okay. Yes, that's true. I look into it on the more um, more spaces, but just. Uh, in our tenure there, we've uh, changed a lot of things to make it more accessible, including the big long ramps in the front of the community center. They weren't there. That's there now for, for anyone to come in from the parking places, from the front of the community center. But as far as the courthouse, I'm sure we do need more. Can I, can I speak to on that, I guess, or, go ahead, or Joe, go ahead if you want to? You brought up an interesting thing about the doors. I think we need to look into that, the, the, the one touch access open doors you know because that, that is something that needs to be addressed on the on the county buildings i agree with joe when he said that you know there, there's only so many things we can do we know that's why we like to hear from our constituents you know sometimes we don't ever hear you know, hear from them until after after the fact you know it's nice to hear from them. you can have an uh, educated or you can have a cordial conversation and you know sometimes we don't know everything and if we hear your side of the point we're like well yeah maybe that's we didn't, I didn't know that. Thank you for telling me that. As far as the elevators, the bathrooms, we've worked on those in the courthouse. Uh, one other thing we did is the parking. Um, we leased the uh, parking lot across the street for the sheriff's office to put his vehicles in there so we would free up more room around the courthouse. 
And one thing that's just happened at the last court meeting is that the two buildings on the end, I don't know if you, when you walk out the back of the um, courthouse, it used to be Myrtle Hoagland's, she used to have a hair shop right there in the Farm Bureau building. T.C. Sanifer has given those to the uh, Ohio County, the court, so we are going to level that, make more parking there, so hopefully that's going to free up more uh, parking accessibility around the courthouse and then free up more for uh, handicap accessible. such a great conversation tonight. I think our candidates would agree. We wanted it to be more of that give and, give, um, give and take exchange. And we so appreciate you all coming out and putting yourself out there and, and having a good community conversation. Um, I'm sure the candidates will be around if anyone has additional questions for them as they leave. Um, you're welcome. We have an Ohio County Health Coalition um, website, or I'm sorry, Facebook page. You're welcome to post a question on there, and we'll make sure we get it to one of the um, candidates if that's beneficial to you. Or with that, would y'all like to make some closing statements? We start with Bingo down. We start with the judge executive down here. Okay. So just uh, thanks everybody for coming, and uh, appreciate your uh, attention. We've kept you a long time. We appreciate you being here, and uh, and, and thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, um, I'd like to thank the Ohio County Health Coalition as well for hosting this event and all that took part that, uh, to help make this uh, make this available. And uh, appreciate all of you being here and, and asking those questions and being concerned with our county. Thank you. I'd like to say the same. And if anybody needs to talk to me afterwards, I'd be available. And you're allowed, you know, come up here and talk to me. And we can. Uh, anybody needs my phone number or anything to extend further conversation on any of these issues, uh, I'd be glad to give it to you. And also I wrote it down in the back of the room earlier if you'd like to get it. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you uh, for letting us speak this evening. And uh, you know, the number one thing that we need to remember is uh, we need to keep the health of Ohio County good. And you know, as the physical court spends the money, we also need to remember that it's the people's money. And uh, we don't do, need to do something just because we think it's a good idea, but we need to be more concerned with the health of the people and their wellness. Thank you for your time this evening. I want to thank everybody for coming out and having all the questions for us. And hopefully, they helped y'all with the way we spoke and all that. So, thank you again. Yeah, I want to thank everybody uh, too. My name is Jason Wall, again, Second District Magistrate. Uh, I would love to have the support again of the Second District. I enjoy doing what I do. I, I'm passionate about Ohio County. I want to make it a better place. I love living here. Uh, if you ever have any questions for me, it's 270-256-5506. I thought I'd put that on there because it's on OC Monitor if some people need to get a hold of me. But again, I, I appreciate you having me and uh, I think we all want to make Ohio County a better place. Thank you.